Aloha guys, this is Nandor from Hungaroo Explorer and today I'm gonna talk about my Everest Base Camp Trek gear. So I just finished Everest Base Camp Trek uh, last month in April. I had an amazing experience and actually I shot a couple of uh, videos about the whole trek. If you're curious about that, you can find those on the link. So just keep in mind that uh, I was there in April. So April and May is the spring season and you can go back to Everest Base Camp Trek in uh, fall, which is October, November. So I'm just gonna show you guys my pack and I'm gonna just start unpacking. And basically I have most of the stuff here what I used and I can explain a little bit about everything. Let's start with the basic. You need a good backpack. And right here, this is my to-go backpack everywhere I go. I usually, if I go out backpacking two, three days or I go traveling, I use the Hyperlight Mountain Gear uh, 40 liter pack, which is a freaking amazing pack. I love it. I owned one for eight years and now I just changed for a new one, a black one. Basically, this is a bomb-proof backpack. <laughs> they say it's water repellent, but actually it's like basically almost waterproof. I suggest to have at least a 30 to 40 liter backpack with you. This was a little bit actually an overkill for me, but the cool thing about this pack, it's a roll top pack. So when you don't have enough gear, you basically just roll it down and make it a smaller pack. So it's pretty amazing, it's comfortable. It's uh, two pounds, so it's a pretty light backpack. So let's talk about hiking poles. Well, if you guys ever watched any of my videos in this channel, you know that I'm not a big fan of hiking poles. We don't really need it here in Hawaii, but uh, for Everest Base Camp Trek, people told me, hey, why don't you just take it just in case? And to tell you the truth, I didn't really use it much. I only used it and the last days going up Kalapatar and it was just basically helping me keep the rhythm and hiking back down. If you use one, I suggest you to get something light. Like this one is the Black Diamond Z-Pole. It's basically folds out and then you can just make it like a nice trekking pole. Super light, so it just disappears in your pack. The other thing, hiking shoes. I know. Everyone talks about you need a pair of good boots, you know, ankle support and la 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 la. But the truth is, I am not a big fan of boots either. So <laughs> I actually picked up a nice trail runners, which is Gore-Tex, so it's waterproof. I never own Gore-Tex shoes. I never used them, but this time I said, you know what, just in case if it's gonna be rain or most likely we're gonna run into some snow, let's keep my uh, foot dry. I picked up the Salomon Sense Ride 4. It's super comfortable. It was just a perfect pair of shoes to have out there. I've seen a lot of people coming with boots, some people with really these mountain eating boots and I saw them having blisters. I was just like, ooh, why? Why don't you just use a nice trail runner? Oh, this was the best pair of shoes I could have used on Everest Base Camp Tech. I would never change it. Uh, maybe if I get really cold, I would change my mind. But for now, this was perfect pair of shoes. They told me to bring two one liter Nalgene bottle because one, you can have it for everyday water carry. Most of the time I had one liter of water with me on the trek. I didn't even carry two liters because we were really so close to towns that if I really needed water, I could have filled it up on another town or something like that. So every night at the tea houses, we filled up with hot water our bottles and uh, put it in the sleeping bag. So what that did is basically when you leave it in for like a couple minutes before you go to bed, it warms up uh, the sleeping bag and makes your you know, falling asleep much easier. And at night, you don't wake up with, you know, cold feet. Some people are more sensitive to cold in their feet. So I think it was a really good technique. I started to use higher up we got on the mountain. And I figured if I put this in my sleeping bag, I didn't have to go to the bathroom that often. So that was definitely a good trick. One of the biggest thing, Okay, so your sleeping bag. Your sleeping bag is a really important thing to have with you because 
it gets cold and higher you get it gets colder when you go in these tea houses of course some of the tea houses they have blankets they have pillows but they get very cold inside beside the actual area where you eat and you know you socialize it's pretty warmer in there but when you go to your room no so if you don't have a the right uh, warmth of sleeping bag you can have a hard time which you don't want and I know a couple of people from our group, they actually had to rent a warmer sleeping bag because they realized that's not gonna be enough of them. Zero degree sleeping bag will get you through everything. Maybe it's gonna be too much when you start out the first couple of days, but you're gonna be very happy later on your trek. The next very critical piece of gear, and probably it's not just the Everest Base Camp Trek, but on a lot of places to have a good rain jacket, which at the same time is a good and windproof jacket. So I got this um, Arteryx Beta AR Gore-Tex jacket, which is a little bit overkill, but how I said, I was preparing to get into a higher peak, so I really needed the jacket, which can handle a lot of weather changes, and this worked out pretty great. You can just use like a regular, you know, Marmot Pressip or Patagonia Torrent Shell jacket, or there are a lot of other uh, rain jackets out on the market but you just want to make sure that they are windproof and waterproof that will help a lot because if the wind picks up everything cools down and you really need a windproof jacket just to keep you warm okay next piece of gear the light down jacket from decathlon if you want something in a budget but still a good quality this jacket will give you that so this is a, a nice jacket which gives you just enough warmth for what you need on the everest base camp track this was on me most of the time you can get away with all kind of hiking pants you don't really need anything special i have this one from decathlon it's a four class uh, hiking pants i use this here in hawaii it's breathable it's flexible it was perfect, I really liked it. It worked out great in the Everest Base Camp Trek. I had no problem, I wasn't cold, so it worked out pretty great. I've seen people doing with jeans, I've seen some in joggers, so I guess it's doable in all kinds of pants. Talking about joggers, it's a very light pair of pants. I just used this after basically I got back to the tea houses I wash off, well, sometimes I just change pants to feel a little bit better and I use this pair of pants. It worked out pretty good, I never used it anywhere else besides, you know, just in the tea houses, but it worked the extra weight because, you know, you are out there for like 10, 11 days and just to change the pants at the end of the day, it's gonna give you some happiness. Let's talk about the underpants basically this can be a good base layer if it gets colder you really want to have one of these because if you're not gonna use it much but closer you get to the top the weather can get cooler and even I use it I think one or two times this pair of uh, long johns they are really good if you can get it in merino wool that would be awesome because actually you can wear it for a couple of days without even getting any odor or anything. So I really suggest if you can pay the extra money to get a merino wool, because that will definitely be better. I use this actually as a pyjama. It's just a simple thin base layer, which I decided to use it as pyjama. I like to sleep in long sleeve and then shorts if I can do. So this worked out pretty good. It's just a very simple thin layer, which is perfect for sleeping in it. We are at base layers. It's better we talk about t-shirts too now. I got four pairs of t-shirts. One smart wool, which is merino wool. I could use this for like four days without even having any odor, any smell. This merino wool is just like amazing. So if I would have all the money in the world, I would just buy merino wool base layer t-shirts everything but if you are on a budget you can just get one of it at least this one is a patagonia one it's a capuline one this is another good material actually it doesn't really smell that much it's very stretchy it's nice i like this and i just had to add the regular t-shirt which one every day or every second day actually i kind of had to change because you know it was already getting smelly i had three different long sleeves 
two of them was like more like very thin. It's like a sun hoodie, but this was one of my favorite actually. Is the Patagonia sun hoodie. This is a really good one. And I had another uh, hoodie like this. I was, I think, a North Face, which was the same kind of thin, but I used that one as a base layer most of the time when I was hiking. When I got colder, I used I used this uh, Patagonia Capilin 2. It's like a heavier weight. It's kind of base layer, which one you can use in colder situations and it worked out pretty great. One of my other favorite gear, unfortunately, is not here at the moment because I left it on the airplane and they never got back to me that they found it. And actually, I just left it on the seat, so pretty bad. And that was an outdoor research Ferrosi jacket, which one was a light soft shell jacket. And that was my to go. When we were hiking higher up, we had more high input activities I used it all the time and that was on me every day the whole 10 days and if I got colder I just put on the wind jacket or the rain jacket and that's it it was probably the best jacket I had which is gone I had four pairs of underwear and it worked out pretty good as I said before merino wool would be the optimal choice but you can just go with you know something quick dry that would work out pretty good and you know changes many times you want it depends how many times you want to wash them or how many pairs you want to carry with you that's like a personal choice these are merino wool socks i got two pairs just for this trek and with those two pairs i could just go through the whole trek i used one for five days and even after that it was like barely any odor you know usually i have to change socks every day but over there because the temperature and this merino wool it's pretty cool so definitely if you can get merino wool socks they are not that expensive buy at least two three pairs and that's gonna save you out there so i brought three hats with me one which is on my head one of these uh, baseball hats i like to wear them all the time they are good against the sun you know against the wind so most of the time I wore this until we got like to 4,400 meters up to Dingboche and after Dingboche it got a little colder so I started wearing hats so I had two other hats with me just one regular hat it's more like a nice comfortable hat which I used it while hiking I had a dinner hat which is very lightweight and this is good as an extra layer our Sherpa told us that you know if you feel a little cold on Gorakshep or Lobuche, which has like over 5,000 meters, you better put on a thin hat and just sleep with it so you don't get sick. I got this uh, Outdoor Research liner gloves. They were perfect. I really like them. You know, it just gives you enough warmth for what you need. If you are a colder, cold-handed person, you might want actually uh, something thicker, just in case. I just used this on the whole track. So another important thing is the buff. This is a lifesaver. So you use this basically like on most of the track because it gets very, very dusty. How trackers go in front of you, they just start bringing up the dust and then yaks coming around and then they cruising through the dusty area. You can get sickness called Kumbu cough, which a couple of our guys had it and it's not good. Other use of the buff, of course, higher you get, it gets colder. Then you just put on this buff and then it gives you a protection against, you know, the cold air, just feel more comfortable. So the buff, it's a really, really important thing. So if you don't have one, make sure you get one. You never think about how important sunglasses can be. I actually took two pairs. I took one older, a little bit scratched up pair of sunglasses, which I used it in lower elevation until we get to 4,500 meters in Dingboche. And after that, I pulled out my Julbo high elevation glasses. So these, they have a special lens, a Spectrum 4 lens, which only lets 5% light through the lens. That's pretty awesome because the light higher you get, stronger it gets. Definitely take two pairs of glasses 
just in case one breaks or something happens you have a second one another thing i took with me and i barely actually used it it was a headlamp the truth i didn't really have to use this much i don't even know if i used a couple of times on the whole everest base camp track you know you always stay in tea houses most of the time there is light but for some reason if you want to get out at the night and then you you know don't want to bother someone you just put on the headlamp and just use it but it's not a lot of use actually i thought i'm gonna use it more but not really so if you go to everest base camp tech you want to make sure you have some kind of camera with you they are just amazing places out there you want to take pictures of everything maybe you want to shot some videos so taking your phone that's the first thing if you have a phone which one takes amazing picture that's great and if you want to take some videos and then you want something really light and versatile you're gonna take a gopro this can take you great videos but if you really want something like really good pictures you better take your bigger camera maybe a, a mirrorless or a dslr definitely taking a camera is key because there are shots you cannot miss out there to have a power bank with you it will save you a lot of time and possibly money i took a 20,000 milliampere bigger power bank and i could charge with that my big camera my gopro my phone everything and that was basically enough for me for the whole track the whole everest base camp track you already have to pay for charging your phone first it starts with two three dollars but then higher you go it can be a six dollar charge just to charge your phone which you know it can add up oh there is one thing i forgot to tell you guys about water you can buy water mostly everywhere on the track it starts at one dollar a bottle and then it just starts raising and raising and when you get to Gorakshep to the last little well town before Everest base camp it can go up to six dollars a bottle of water so if you don't want to spend a lot of money on water then it's better if you have some purification tablets which i had with me and or a water filter but water filter you have to watch out just make sure it's not a hollow filter which can freeze overnight and then you are done with them you have to make sure you want a filter or a steady pen which can work on colder conditions so i'm not going to get too much into the toiletries but there are a couple things i want to mention so first of all toilet paper toilet paper it's a must you have to have it with you and make sure you keep it on the outside pocket actually of the of your pack because you have to take it with you none of the bathrooms has toilet paper in nepal sunscreen is very important because higher you get the sun gets stronger and stronger so at least for your face your nose your ears you really want to put sunscreen okay the most important thing that you don't really need the most expensive jacket or backpack or sleeping bag the most important that you have the right gear to make your track more enjoyable and don't forget go out there enjoy the landscape enjoy the culture it's a beautiful track it's gonna be a lifetime experience so i hope this video was useful and got you some good information about maybe you're planning your future Everest base camp track and if it did just press the like button that will help my channel and subscribe if not yet and see you guys next time aloha